Hello, my name is Matisse Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the time Xavier tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Galactus. came out way back in 1999, and it was written, this particular story, by Alan Davis. And we're going to cover X-Men issue. Oh, man, my eyesight. I'm getting old. I have to... <laughs> 89, X-Men 89, 90, and there's actually an Uncanny X-Men issue thrown in here, Uncanny X-Men 370. So, before we get into the story, that's, it's pretty interesting, it's, it's very different, at least for me. I remember when I was reading this, I was sort of caught by surprise, the, the whole situation and the story that leads up to Xavier fighting against Galactus. Prior to this, we had Magneto being, battles of the X-Men, had this doomsday device, puts the world... Um, on edge, the UN decides to give uh, Magneto uh, Genosha. He, make, he becomes the leader of Genosha. After that, we had the death of Joseph, and we had Wolverine. There's a whole situation between Wolverine and Xavier. Like Wolverine was about to gut Magneto, catch him by surprise. Xavier turns off his mind, stops him. Wolverine's really pissed off with Xavier. Um, and what happens is the X-Men are teleported to another universe where Juggernaut, who for some reason has become insanely powerful and punches holes through reality, ended up in this universe and everything there is going to die. I think it's called the Alpha Trion universe. This particular story arc, uh, at least for me, it's an okay filler. Like I expected more with Juggernaut that's punching holes with rea through reality. Like, I like the whole idea that he was causing trouble and uh, he was going to destroy this whole reality. But, like, the two issues where this takes place, at least for me, it doesn't have a pretty good payoff. Like, look at that cover. Like, at least the cover is really awesome. I remember buying this back in the day and being really let down by the story. But the thing is, after helping these aliens, the aliens teleport them back home. But something went wrong. They're teleported what seems to be Earth, but uh, something's not right. Also sort of feels like they've been teleported back in time to the 1980s because the thing is they see heroes fighting on the streets all the time all over the place there's a constant battle the x-men actually see themselves in these battles so they don't understand what the hell is going on where they had ended up like i remember when i first started to read this i thought uh they were in the mojo mojo verse or something like that so what happens is kitty pride actually sort of infiltrates uh, kid, uh, takes down one of these imposters, takes the costume, starts to investigate. They discover that all these people that are posing as heroes, they're studying up, they're trying to find as much information as possible. Like some, some of them are actually uh, ranting that there's not enough information about mutants. And, <clears throat> and in, in these battles, they, they don't get the good battles uh, that mutants are second-rate heroes and stuff like that. And that further down the line, they're not going to get the good missions. So what actually happens is that the X-Men are actually teleported to the Scroll home world. And the Scroll home world at the moment prior to Galactus consuming this world. And back then, I really didn't like the Scrolls as villains. I thought they were pretty lame. Like Scrolls went one way over way further down the line uh, with Secret Invasion and sort of like retroactively. I started to like them in stories. So the X-Men are on the scroll home world. They're trying to survive. They discover that Galactus is on the way. In the Alpha Trion story, Gambit actually hits Marrow with his um, exploding cards. Marrow's in really bad shape. And actually, we cut into the issue that I mentioned before, Uncanny X-Men 370. So you can see Adam Kubert's art, which is really awesome. Also, this whole situation with the scrolls, so it's sort of going to, um, further down the line, oddly enough, scrolls are going to be involved with um, with Apocalypse in the whole, uh, what's this called? The 12 crossover, which was in a colossal letdown. Like, I, I'm not sure how much of the 12, I've kind of covered certain parts of the 12 crossover, but boy, I remember when that came out, what a letdown. And I, there, I really, and still up to this day, didn't like the inclusion of scrolls in that story. So, Galactus has arrived. And Xavier tries to channel the minds of every person on the Scroll Homeworld. 
uses all their psionic energy, just jam, try, straight goes out and straight up tries to stop Galactus. Also, while this was going on, as I mentioned before, Gambit was trying to help save Mero's life. She puts him, uh, puts Mero, her, into a scroll medicine machine, something like that. And she comes out looking different, like her powers seem to have been modified. I really actually like this evolution for the character that later on was completely forgotten over the years, where seemingly now Mero is beautiful, she's not as grotesque. She has more control over her powers. She seems to be more happy. Uh, the relationship between Gambit and Mero is also really interesting, um, especially because uh, Mero's not aware of Gambit's involvement with the Mutant Massacre. But the thing is, Xavier, with all his might, being one of the most powerful telepaths of the universe, Galactus just basically shrugs off the attack. He's like, you guys shouldn't be here. You're, this is not your place. And just decides to proceed to consume the planet, the X-Men have to make a run for it. And this is how the story ends. Xavier tries, fails to stop Galactus. Then we get after this, that I'm going to cover in another video, a pretty cool story where the X-Men have to fight against Red Skull. That, oddly enough, Red Skull makes a really good fit for an X-Men villain due to the nature of the character. So, we're going to cover that in another video. See you guys next time. Bye.